Macro Sociology From the very beginning of sociology, there has been debate and discussion among scholars about what exactly sociology is. This debate has centered on two basic questions. What is the subject matter of sociology, and what is the proper way of studying sociology? This discussion is still important to modern sociology. In our day, sociology can be divided into two basic camps. One is macro sociology, and the other is micro sociology. This video focuses primarily on macro sociology. There's another video that discusses micro sociology. One thing that's important to point out is that the line between these two camps is not always clear, and I don't think that it really needs to be. The primary reason, I think, for creating this division within sociology is that it helps us make better decisions about how we go about studying the different things that sociologists are interested in. Most definitions for macro sociology will be based in the subject matter. The definition you'll usually see for macro sociology focuses on the organization, the study of organizations, social structures, and institutions. Macro sociology is the study of these things. One of the most interesting ideas within sociology is that these kinds of organizations, these large groups of people that have a social structure, can be viewed almost, but not quite, like individual actors. Let's use an example to illustrate. If we take a specific church, say the local Baptist church, and a local business, say a grocery store, these are social structures, they're organizations, they're institutions that have a role within their society. And macro sociology is interested in the ways they relate to one another and interact. Let's say that these two organizations come together regularly to provide a soup kitchen for homeless or otherwise needy people in the neighborhood. Macro sociology is the study of the ways that institutions work together to provide a or to perform a social role or provide a social service. Macro sociology doesn't end there though. It can get even bigger. Here we use the example of a specific church, but we could go broader and talk about Christianity as a whole. Within the social category, or identity, or maybe social condition of Christianity, there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of different churches and individuals who identity with the idea of Christianity. A macro-sociologist might be interested in how Christianity, as a social entity, influences the political process within a nation. One of the points that you may have noticed is that the larger we get, the further away from individuals we get. Christianity is not a few individuals, it is thousands and millions of individuals who, though loosely connected, still have an influence on the political process. Macrosociology is interested in how this happens. We can take this one step further and look at the way that nations interact with each other. A nation is made up of a wide variety of institutions and social structures, religions, um, political groups, business groups, and others, all come together under one banner, one identity, as a nation. Macrosociologists are interested in how this happens. One last idea that's important in macrosociology is that like all sociology, macrosociology is interested in how these groups influence individuals. Now, if a couple of individuals are disgruntled with the behavior and policies of the local Baptist church, it's probably not going to catch the attention of any sociologists. But if large numbers of people, say 20 or 30 percent, are disgruntled enough that they break off and form their own group, that then has an antagonistic 
relationship to the original church, that's a macrosociological phenomenon. Again, it's the interaction of institutions, structures, and organizations that is most interesting to macrosociology. A really good example, a classic example of this, is the famous work of Emile Durkheim, entitled Suicide. In this, Durkheim examined social conditions within nations and how they affected individual behaviors such as suicide. He wasn't looking at one or two individuals who committed suicide, but rather large numbers of people. This example brings us back to methods. The statistical tools used by all scientists are particularly applicable in macrosociological studies. One of the reasons that Durkheim's study was so famous is because it's probably the first study to use statistical tools to analyze society. Other methods often employed by macrosociologists include surveys, census data, or other vital statistics, such as birth rates or death rates, or how often people get sick. A good way to think about these kinds of research methods and tools is that they're trying to find out a few points, say one to five items, about millions of people. Maybe not necessarily millions, but large numbers of people. For example, if the macrosociologist is over here interested in how Christianity influences the political process, they might do a survey that ask people their religious identity, whether or not they are Christian, their income, their economic status, and how active they are in the political process. By looking at these things, they will find out, for example, if richer Christians are more likely to participate in the political process. This isn't super detailed, but it can tell us a few important things about a large number of people. Another or other methods that are important to macrosociological approaches include historical studies. More specifically, macrosociologists might look at the laws or changes in the economic condition that have influenced society over time. A really good example with laws is race in the United States. Since the beginning of the United States, race has been an important part. From the Constitution and slavery, to the Emancipation Proclamation, to Jim Crow segregation, and now to affirmative action, laws have helped create race and our understanding of it within the United States. Social structures, institutions, and organizations have been built up around the ideas of race that are associated with laws that were made sometimes hundreds of years ago. Changes in the economic condition are also influential and important in understanding changes in changes and behavior of social institutions. Probably the most important thing for you to remember, the bottom line, if you will, is that macrosociology is the study of organizations, social structures, institutions, and their behavior, both their interaction among each other and their influence on individuals and the broader society. These are macro sociological questions. Thank you for watching.